Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, would you take a guaranteed $1 million or flip a coin for the chance to win $1 billion? Practical Doug says take the million because with the right mindset, Justin, you can turn a million dollars into a billion if you know how to hustle. Oh, boy. Is this, are we starting your TED Talk now? <laughs> No, I'm like, practical Doug's TED talk. Well, this is like one of those things where it's like, all right, um, you will get a hundred thousand dollars, <throat> but your worst enemy will get two hundred thousand dollars. Do you accept that? And people are like, fuck that, no way. It's like, what? Or they're like, okay, you get fifty thousand dollars, but everyone else gets twenty five thousand dollars. They're like, I'll take that. It's like you, right. you just took less. Because right. it's the psychology of like, but I'm making more than everybody else. It's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> also, do you think that your enemy is going to use the two hundred thousand against you? Do are they? Do they have more resources now in order to take you down? I saw a great response to that. We're like, oh, that's easy. They're like, I, I'm, I'm taking all of it. And the guy goes, what do you mean? He goes, because my worst enemy is me. No one hates me more than I hate myself. So I'm taking. That's I'm so taking three hundred thousand dollars. Give it to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love that I was that like, answer. that's actually a really good answer. Sad, <laughs> but true, but great answer. Well, it's like the, it's very simple. It's also like the snail. Uh, yeah. Remember the snail one? Yeah. yeah. Where it's just like, I'll take the money because then I have the money to fight the resources to fight it. And right. it's like, you think so, but it's not going to stop. Yeah. No, I, I take a million dollars because um, I don't need a billion. Like, what what are, what are my goals? You know what I mean? Like, Well, Doug... I'm going to give you the argument that I that I saw. All right. Uh, it was a, this is a reel that asked this question. Okay. And there was a huge. It was it was a very mind gappy debate. There was these dudes working in an office. Someone posed it, and the entire office got into like an argument it's about fantastic. Which, which I love it. it Tell me more. And so one of the guys was his whole thing was a million dollars does not get you what it used to. You could have one billion. You have a 50 50 shot of getting one billion dollars and a million dollars isn't going to do for you what it, what what it used to do. Like a million dollars is like nothing in today's day and age. And the other, this one guy, it was basically this one guy versus the entire office. This other guy was like, are you fucking kidding me? It's a million dollars. And he's like, yeah, but it's not what it used to be. He goes, I don't know what that means. It's a million dollars. I don't, I don't like that argument. He's not wrong. No? Yes. A million dollars today is not the same as a million dollars 40 years ago. Yes. Right. Very true. But also a million dollars right now is pretty fucking nice. Still a million dollars, right? Yeah, because the other option like is you flip a coin and you get nothing. It's 50-50. I don't like those odds at all, <laughs> like at all. So you take the you take the million dollars tax free, yeah. and you you just rock and roll. Absolutely. I, I mean, listen, yeah. would it be nice to have a billion dollars? Absolutely. Like, no no question about it. But I'd rather guaranteed take a million dollars right now in my current state of things. Holy shit. I could do a lot with that million dollars, you know? Right. Like, well, and that's the thing. Like, nothing in the question states that, like, you take one or the other and then you have to quit working no matter what. Like, it's no. it's not like you have a million dollars to live off of. It's like, no, you've got whatever you're doing now plus a free tax-free million dollars to do what you want with. Holy so shit. So I'm like, great. That's 100% getting invested and I will be retiring yeah. very early. Oh my God. My financial I'm advisor in, the record, would be I'm like, the same camp my financial advisor is like, let's do this. I'm like, let's right. go. Let's go. Because I mean, if you think about it, yeah. like, you know, again, just to get a little in the nitty gritty of it, like you could, you know, if you are comfortable right now, right? You're, you know, I don't want to say surviving, but you're comfortable. You take that million dollars, you fucking invest it right now. Mm -hmm. You could probably retire early. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like you could just yeah. be like, boom, put this to work. You know, again, yeah. my savings account analogy, you get 5% return on that every month. Yeah. I mean, let's do the math on that. Do it. Do it you know, real quick, it's like Doug. $1 million. I know I should be able to do this in my head, but, you know, times. No, fuck that. You're getting 50 grand a month. Tell me you can't live off that. 50 grand a month in interest right. alone. Right. So right. one month, you get 50 grand. I think you, you can survive off on that. And then you just keep, let that keep going. Let that keep rolling. You get and, the equivalent of a salary right. every month. Right. 
yeah. in interest. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. So like, right. there you go. You take 50 grand. You take that out and you'll be okay for several months. And then right. you just let that accumulate. Not to mention yeah. you could be way more aggressive with that. Oh, and yeah. Put that towards something else and just watch the gains come. I mean, if sure. on average, the uh, stock market gets you 12% back every, you know, every year. So you're looking at 120, 120 grand just in investments, you know. Like, well, if you were making 5% a month and huh? you were doing that 50 grand thing, like literally, like take four, take, <laughs> take four months, like take that. That's what you live on. And then you've got the rest of the the rest of the year to just reinvest and put that back in, and that gains five percent on that. Yeah. And you've, like you do, I, are you kidding me? I could, you could I could take four months worth of of interest and just straight up live on that, and then bank the rest. Well, no, yeah, just think about that. Think about that. That's, you that's get, a no brand. You get fifty grand. You get fifty grand right. in one month. You're like, you know, you don't have to pay off all your debts right away, but you can make a significant no. dent. And that stuff, right? Absolutely. You're going to overpay, yeah. maybe double up on your car payment or on your, your mortgage for that month. Sure. Just be like, bada bing, bada boom. Probably more than that. And you're good. Good. I got that squared away. And then you mm-hmm. just let it go. Like, keep working right. if you want, you know, or whatever. Right. Just like you start. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a no brainer. Give me the million dollars. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. You could take half of that 50. Yeah. You put $25,000 against your mortgage and then you still have $25,000 to fuck around in with. In a month? 25 a grand? Month. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Are you shitting? Oh, yeah. but you could get a billion dollars. Or I could get nothing. <laughs> fuck you, man. No way. Give me the million dollars. Guaranteed? Fuck yes. <laughs> fuck yes. Yeah, but Doug, Doug, then you got to pay taxes on that interest. Good. Good. <laughs> We should. It's not a full 50. You it's not should. not a full 50, man. You should. And you know what? If I'm part of the person that the people are like, I love the thing right now where people are like, oh my God, Kamala Harris says she's going to tax unrealized gains. I'm like, okay, are you making a million dollars? Because if you're not, that doesn't apply to you. So right. you fucking dipshit. I think Noah posted a really great <laughs> meme in our Discord, by the way. Check the link in the description to our Discord of, of someone being like, uh, <laughs> new taxes on if you make a million dollars a year. And it was a picture of a woman screaming and backing up. He goes, my friends who make $35,000 a year. You know, like, because that's what it always is. People are like, yeah. well, someday I might make that and then that'll suck. Right. And it's like, well, it's not happening now. So fucking chill your right. tits. All right. Like it's. Yeah. When that day comes, that, that'll that be something you have to deal with. But until then. All right. Chill your life, tits. Man. You know, there it just, is. <laughs> right. So, Justin, right. what would you do? <laughs> would you mm. take the million? No, I would fucking flip the coin. No, I, <laughs> no, I would absolutely take the million. There's there's no question in my mind. I would. I love the idea. Like the optimist in me is just like, I mean, I don't know, man, just one flip of a coin and you're, you're one flip of a coin away from being a billionaire. But again, I'm like the 1 million is guaranteed to your point. Fuck that. Also, like, I don't think I do we can my conceptualize job, the difference yeah. between a million and a billion. Like a billion is an insane amount of money. Yes. A million is also an insane amount of money. Well, it's, it's a million, it's like a million to a billion. Like there's a, sure there's a big discrepancy there, but I'm going to guess a million compared to your current annual salary is probably a, still a big, di- it might not be an equivalent discrepancy, but it's a big discrepancy. You know, um, so it'll be a big old fucking jump. It's like Howie Mandel has said, like when he was doing, you know, uh, what was that? Pick your number in the suitcase game, whatever it's called. Want to make a deal, make a deal. Let's make a deal. Yes, let's make it whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he would be like talking to people before the show. And some of these people were just like dirt ass poor, like just deal or no deal, deal Sorry. or no deal. There it is. Yeah. I was like, I don't know if the fucking show is called. Um, and he'd be talking to him and they're just basically like, you know, they, they just don't, they don't have that much. And then, so he'd be offering them a deal and what he's offering them is like double the amount of money they would see in a year. Sure. And yeah. they'd be like, mm, I don't know. And he's just, he would emphasize, he goes, this is more money double the amount of money that you would see in a year because it's the greed factor it's the grossest oh, yeah. part of our human that's why this 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 question is so fascinating it's like do you want yeah. a million or a billion it's like of course i'm gonna go for the billion i'm like but you could lose it. you could get nothing they're like right. yeah but i could also get a billion it's like anyone who goes to gamble they're like well if i let it ride i could i could double it it's like 
It's a that's fallacy. A, that's why, <laughs> that, exactly. That's why casinos do so goddamn well. Yeah, because they bank on that greed to be like, let's let it ride, baby. I'm on a hot streak. It's the, you know, it's the, right. the shooter's fallacy, <clears throat> right? That you're like, well, I've been winning, so I'm going to keep winning. It's like, that's, well. Why, why, would, I, why would my luck turn? Yeah. Why, would, why would this ever dude, change? You, the, the, most of the stories are like, dude, I was up so much. I, like, I was right. up. It's like, okay, but what'd you leave with? <laughs> A lot less. In fact, right. I had to, I had to, I had to take a lot of money out of my bank account to cover what I lost. Right. You know, it's like, oh my god, oh my god. So you broke even? Yeah. Yeah. No, but you lost. Like I was up though. You lost. Yeah, but I was up. It's like <laughs> you, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. But did you hear the first part of my did story? You hear where the first I was part? Up? Where I, you yeah. know, whatever. I have another. I have another question for you. Ooh, I please. want to ask this, and, and, and for the record, please leave us a comment and let us know, like, what would you take, the million dollars guaranteed or flip a coin to get possibly a billion? I'd love to hear it. And I'd love to hear your arguments for and against both of those. But Justin, um, yes. very important question. Do you wash your legs in the shower? <laughs> I love these because I never know what's coming yeah, out of your mouth next. And it makes me so happy. It's very important. Um I do. Yes. Okay. Have you always? As far as I can remember back, yes. Okay. So you make it a clear point to like, I'm going to soap up. I'm going to sh- you know wash my chest, my arms, everything like that. And then you do shampoo. And then I'm also going to scrub my legs and everything like that. And my yes. feet and everything like that. Yes. With, well, not my feet. Okay. I don't go all the way. So I go down, I go down to like the ankle and I just assume <laughs> that, you know, the feet are in the wa- the soapy water. So they're kind of getting clean. Yeah. So you get 90%. But I don't like go in 90, like 90% scrub of the way there. Between, cool. Gotcha. My toes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I just, I go down. Yeah. I go down uh, all the way to the ankle and come back up. Yeah. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on it, sure. but you know, I, I go, I go down there. I think you're unique because from what I understand anecdotally and from the internet is that, uh, most white people don't wash their legs. <laughs> most white, white people do not. White people. Do, and I'll say okay. this much. Wasn't we so just allow probably the soap a, to kind of run down. They and let just, the soap run like, down and do it. Like what, what I do with my feet. Right. <laughs> They just assume yeah, like, okay. they're like, ah, it's coming down here. It'll take care of itself on the way down, yeah. you know? Uh, and I'll admit, not until probably a year or two ago, did I actually start consciously washing my legs. Interesting. Okay. Because yeah. I thought, ah, yeah, it'll, 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 it's fine. The soap will take care of it. And I'm like, yeah. And then recently I'm like, I should probably spend some time actually scrubbing my legs. Let me ask you this. What, we'll just, we're going to, this whole episode is just going to be us volleying questions yeah, back right? and forth. Let me ask you a Let question. Let me ask you this, Doug. <laughs> do you believe in what gold? Pro- <laughs> do you believe in gold? I'm sorry, the metal? Uh, That's what, clearly I mean, a real thing. Yeah, yeah, but do you believe um, in it? Do you believe in its value? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what prompted the shift a year ago? Uh, Why did you all of a sudden take 40 years worth of, you know, what you, or I don't know, let's say you started when you were 10. 30 something years of bathing yourself and just change it up. I think it's uh, hearing other random people talk about this on podcasts. They'd ask the question. So like, has this been a thing that's been making its round? Yeah. I have not heard of this. Yeah. Like people are like, hey, do you okay. wash your legs? And people are like, all right. Yeah. Like you don't. They're like, no way I don't. And I'm like, oh shit, I don't think I do either. It's just like one of those things that you just do. You don't even. And because no one's it, yeah. in there watching you wash, you know, unless you're cool, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> You know, I mean, if you subscribe to the Mind Gap OnlyFans, you, you can go. see us. Watch, Sign up on but, Patreon, yeah. you might get that camera angle. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things where you know you're not getting feedback on how you're washing your body. So like, <laughs> it's it's like we like to do your quarterly check in, yeah, uh, right? about your body washing. Right. Well, it's like you know, did your family have any weird peccadillos or anything that you realized were weird when you started living with other people? You know. <laughs> Gosh, that's a really good question. Because that's one of the the coolest and the worst things about like going away to college and you start living with people, you start realizing like what things are normal, like most people do, and the things that other people don't do. You're like, You're like oh, Ooh. that's a that's a our family thing. Or you Got realize it. just like kind of how you have some gross habits. Like I remember one time my yeah. junior year, like I, uh, I I trimmed my beard and shaved and just left everything in the sink. Like I did, oh, I did, no. I didn't <sighs> clean it out and. One of my roommates goes, hey, who the fuck did this? I go, it was me. He's like, hey, you're a fucking animal. Clean it out when you're done. And I was like, you're right. That was gross. I should I should clean that out. And from that day on, I've cleaned it out. So that was like a useful thing where I'm just like, all done and then leave. You know, like. So wait, you so you would would you. OK, I got so many ask questions. questions. How, so what did the, did your mom come in and clean it up after you? Like when you were living at home, like what did you do? You just came back into a bathroom that literally was covered in hair and just operated. That's a good question. 
I'm trying to remember. I think I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I think I probably just left it. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know, someone else just assumed someone else would clean up, which is why I'm trying to stop Natalie from doing that right now at eight years old. I'm like, hey, where do you think who is going to clean this up? Right. Like the other day, she, we, I just mowed the lawn and she was like playing the dogs and she came in. She, she came in. She came in and she took off her shoes. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She done come, Dean. And she just was like wiping s- s- grass off her feet into the kitchen. And I go, <laughs> I go, oh, oh, time out, time out. I go, clean that up. And she goes, oh. I'm like, because otherwise it's just going to stay there, right? I was like, oh. Take care of that, please. <laughs> she, oh, okay. And she goes and cleans up. I'm like, thank you. Like, because I'm you. like, I'm like Child, oh, this, 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 I mean, there was this wonderful sketch I saw where this woman, his wife comes into this guy and she's like, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. This place is filthy. I just, I, I'm losing my mind. And the guy goes, whoa, hold on. Just whatever you need cleaned up, just put it here on the coffee table. Just leave it here. <laughs> and in 24 hours, it just goes where it goes where it's supposed to go. She goes, what? He goes, yeah, I leave shit here all the time. And the next day. It just goes. It's put back to where it belongs. And she's like, <laughs> it cuts to him being divorced. Like she left him because he's just been leaving shit and she's been putting it away. And he goes, no, it's a magical thing, man. You just leave it there and it goes back to where it belongs. Love it. I fucking uh, love it. So, yeah. So like, to get to your question, um, yeah, I think I just left it there. It's gross. It's very gross. It, it, it's I'm not proud of it, but this uh, is like this is part of the journey as you grow up and you live. This is a, this is adult. Yeah, exactly. You learn exactly. like, oh, that is gross. I shouldn't do that. I I should cool. I need to be better about that. You know, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> gosh, it was just there was another something else that was. I'm trying to remember what the uh, we were talking about uh, when you learned. When you when you figured out washing your legs, and you said it was like, uh, God darn it! There was another there was another uh, another qu- another thing that I was going to ask if you guys if you do. Oh yeah. no, that's what it was. I was going to say I just had this. I this happened to me, and as it happened, I stopped, and I got thrown back to the podcast where we talked about this. Okay, and I was like, Why did this just happen? The other day. I did sock shoe, sock shoe. You fucking psychopath. <laughs> and it it was completely, I think I was getting ready for the gym. It was like five in the morning and I was like half asleep and I would put my sock on and I just had everything laid out. I put my shoe on and I stopped, I went to put my next sock on. I'm like, why is my shoe on? Cause like, you know, you're doing it. You're, you're just <laughs> operating on, you know, whatever, like half asleep. And I'm like, wait a second. Oh my God. I just did the thing. Oh no, I'm I'm a psycho. That was my friend. I was like, oh no. I went right back to it. I'm like, I have to tell Doug. I finally did sock shoe. It was unintentional, but I gotta say, felt very weird to have one. I was gonna sock say, I, fe- I thought that feels on. weird, right? Yeah, you don't it have. It feels a, very weird. Yeah, one's fully equipped. The other one is naked. You know, he's completely not ready to go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. very strange. Um, yeah, so, so living with would people, not recommend. Yeah, living with people important because you get to learn. What's, oh, yeah. what's sort of like standard accepted behavior and what's not. And you get to right. learn where you fit on that spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> and you can adjust accordingly. Not to and say that you have to conform, but you also have to realize no. what your shortcomings are. <laughs> Absolutely. And sometimes it's a it can be a very a rude awakening. Mm-hmm. It can be a very like, oh, I did not realize. My bad. Yeah. 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 Let us know yeah. what are some yeah. things that you learned were weird behaviors when you lived with yeah. other people. <laughs> And whether or not how hard you were judged for them. We'd love to know in those comments. We, I will say when when we when we first moved into to college, I was horrible at cleaning my room up mm-hmm. when I all the way through grade school through high, which is a messy room. Uh, it wasn't until I moved in with my first girlfriend that I realized I'm like, oh, I have to I, I've got to start cleaning when. But Milos and I moved in together into in college and he was the same way in our room. Doug, I'm telling you what. I look back now, our room, our joint room was fucking gross. And I look back now and I go, how did we live this way? How in the name of God did we live this way? And thank God for moving in with someone who forced me to start doing that. And it's just, yeah, I I can't, I look back on that and I cannot imagine having to put up with myself at that age. Like my parents, God bless them. Because that was, that was, that was something I realized 
again, not moving in with the first person, Milos, but moving in with someone else. I was like, oh, I'm really bad about this. This is gross. I need to change this. I I feel like it's that line from Matrix uh, Reloaded <laughs> where Neo goes, you need us for power. And the architect goes, there's levels we're willing to, to to sink to in order to survive. That's how I am about like living on my own. And so like <laughs> there's things I'm very much willing to let go, like right. food wise and everything else where I'm like, hey, man, it's just me here. So right. like. Fuck you guys. Like, I'll do whatever I want. And then you realize when people are going to come over, you're like, oh, my God. Like, what's mm-hmm. what's going on? Fortunately, what have I, done? I haven't lived like that for very long. Uh, God, God bless the people that I have lived with. I haven't lived solo. So, like, you know, it hasn't gotten too bad. But uh, I, I, I've seen some stuff where I'm like, oh, that easily could have been me. Easily. Yeah. Easily yeah. could have been me. Honestly, could still be me if the circumstances are right well that's the thing i'm not a hundred percent convinced i wouldn't revert back to that like I, I i i'm conditioned currently but like i don't know if it's if it's something that has been like conditioned out of me mm-hmm. or it's just like it's based off of the circumstances if is it is it a circumstantial conditioning or is it like a is it has have things changed yeah i, I think part of it too is, i don't know is age like the older you get the less you care sort of thing so no, that's true. you could very much be like, I don't, I don't fucking care. Like, eh, whatever. Welcome. Yeah. What are you going to do? Judge me? Fuck you. I'm going to die soon. Like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You know, <laughs> sir, you're 65. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. We all have a limited time on this I don't earth. give a shit. Why should I waste it on that, that closed mountain? I don't give a fuck. I want it to be nude. It's more efficient. That's where the evil right. practical Doug really takes over. It's like, exactly. Oof. Yeah. You know, why am I going to wash my leg? The soap run downs it anyway. It's fine. I barely use them anyway. Sir, he walked. I, I don't care. Legs I don't care. Legs. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's got, this got real dark, sir. Yeah. It got real dark. Uh, speaking of dark stuff and, you know, I don't know, just, uh, financial things. Um, have you heard about this chase thing, this chase bank debacle? I, I had not until I was, uh, clued into it by you earlier today, but I did not realize this was a thing that had, that had been playing itself out and it is, it's something I'll tell you that much. Uh, I told Jill this tonight over dinner and her eyes just got wide, her mouth fell agape and she's like, What? So if you haven't heard about this, uh, it's been going around social media, but apparently um, there was uh, some folks on the TikToks of the world telling people that, hey, there's a free money glitch at Chase Bank. All you got to do, (laughs) all you got to do is write yourself a check for any amount of money that you want. You go to an ATM, deposit that check, and then Chase... We'll spit that money out of the ATM. Doesn't matter if you have that amount in your account or not. It just spits it out. It's free money. Because what the, what, what, there you go. What really happens is when you deposit a check in, JP Morgan and most banks will be like, all right, you're depositing a check. We're going to assume that this is a good check. So we're going to give you an advance on the money that you're depositing. But if the check comes through as bad, Guess what? The bill comes due. I need to pull that line. audio drop because I feel like I yes. say that all the fucking time. I need to yes. pull that because it'd be like, the bill comes due. The bill so comes due. A bunch of asshats were <laughs> lining up <laughs> and they were going to Chase Bank. And so they were going to ATMs where they would put in their debit card, right? And to access their account and they would deposit a check, the camera turns on on the ATM and they deposit a fraudulent check that goes to their account that has their name, their birthday, the social security number, their address. And they're like, fraudulent check, please. And they would get money out and they'd be like, woo, this is a, this is like, you know, playing Diablo one and doing like the gold glitch where you just like click gold at the same time. And it just like populate doubles the gold. And then they check their balances and they're like, "Uh uh-oh, it says I'm negative $30,000 in the hole. Oh, fuck. It's because, yeah, JP Morgan is, that's not a glitch. It's how the system works, man. And you just committed check fraud. And they literally caught you on camera doing it. Right. Well, 
And that's the, I love the fact that they frame this, that some, that, that they're, I, this is why I believe that social media is collectively lowering or it's lowering our collective IQ. Like this is because these people believe that there's just a glitch in the banking system. Look, there are people who have found loopholes and who take advantage of different tax laws and banking things. Like I, I get that. But to assume <laughs> that this is a legitimate, oh my God, we just hacked the matrix. We just, we just, we hacked we hacked the banking system. All we had to do was write a check for more than we have, and they gave us the money back. Like just to to have the goal to think that that actually works. Uh, I will. I will say this much. Um, I will say, I don't think social media is necessarily making us dumber. It's getting more people access to bad information, and I think people who are dumb unfortunately have easier access to bad information and therefore make poor decisions based on that bad information. That is a very uh, uh, optimistic and politically uh, sound way of putting it. Well, I think, I, think about it this way. Uh, dumb people have always existed, right? They've always existed, but would you also agree that social media has uh, lowered our uh, uh, attention level? Or, or like the, the amount of time or the duration that we can For hold sure. attention it's on. For sure, it's had an effect on that. But also, like, I don't know, let's go back to the 1980s. There was always dumb people there believing dumb people shit, right? Agreed. But they didn't have access to a device that was able to just shoot information in their face at all times whenever they wanted well, to. So I agree to that too. But I'm just saying, I, I think that people start, like the same way that it's affected attention spans, I feel like it's affected people now. Like if someone posts something with any sort of, I get a lot of uh, fitness influencers and I get a lot of the people who call out fitness influencers. And I, I, I point back to that as an example is that people will believe you say something with authority. People are going to believe it. Like them a ton of people yeah. and not just like, like, tr like not people who were already like gullible or dumb to begin with, but a lot of people who have relatively good heads on their shoulders. Like look at how many our parents who we assumed we're smart are fallen victim to all the fate like ever since like kick it back to 2010 mm -hmm. you know like i for some reason that date that year sticks out to me i feel like that's whenever it really year. started to turn great year but yeah but 20 like you you like how many times do you get something from and you're like nope that's that's just not true that's just hardcore not true it's because again, I think people just there's fall so much to it. easily accessible misinformation and disinformation, mm. and people are like you said, saying things with authority or saying things that like, oh wow, they said there's a study that says oats are bad for you. I'm not going <laughs> to eat oats anymore. It's like, right. yeah, there's no Did study, you or you study? misunderstood the study, right. and this person's like, cite it, don't ever eat oats ever again. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, like right. just, <clears throat> you know, it's too easy to fall into those traps. And I had that, I was explaining this chase thing to, and Nally was like, what's, what's fraud? I'm like, well, you know, and I started explaining what fraud is and I go, Hey kiddo, this is going to be your first lesson right now. Don't trust the internet. I go, <laughs> cause Jill goes, yeah. So let's put, let's put in information in a way that you'd understand. If a van were to pull up to say free puppies, Nally goes, <gasps> she goes, don't go to that van. She goes, Oh, it goes, cause that means it's too good to be true. Right. right. A van comes up and says free puppies. That's probably something you should be suspicious of. Like I go, or a van that says free candy. She goes, oh, wait a second. I go, now you're getting it. I go, that's the there internet in a nutshell. That's the, that's the internet IRL. Yeah. I go, we're going to be coaching you a lot as you get older about don't yeah. trust anything on the internet. Don't trust people on the internet because it's full of bad people. So oh, it's it, well, and the, the shitty thing is like not to derail this too far, but the shitty thing is, is that's starting to it, it. I mean, it it's making its way even more prevalent in real life with the the uh, advent of of all like the deep fakes and the AI and the oh, like yeah. everything that they can do now. You've heard endless stories about people getting these phone calls from people who I swear to God it was my daughter. Yeah. It was her voice, and she knew things about like this and that. And they people scrape data. They get you know emails and they you know texts to this and that. They can get this information that only these two people should know, you know, they get a little bit, they pull clips from social media, they get that person's voice and they can craft a very compelling thing. Oh my God, I was traveling and I ran out of money. Can you please wire me? You know, here's, mm -hmm. here's a number to wire money to. It's just, it, it's really, it's starting to bleed out from behind the digital wall into 
again into like into real life. Yeah. And yeah. in so many ways. It's not just the windowless van anymore. Yeah. And the thing is, like, the scams don't even need to be that good because it's just a numbers game, right? Yeah. Like they oh, just God, have yes. to catch Absolutely. somebody. You know, yeah. uh, like I love the ones that come through. It's like, here's your invoice, you know, like oh, I my I mom yeah. back when we were speaking, she sent me this thing. She's like, is this real? And it's like, here's this invoice for whatever. Yeah. And her response was like, don't contact me again or I'm going to get in touch with my lawyer and you're going to be in some real trouble there, buckaroo. And I was it's like, like the people who post on Facebook that say, you know, just in case I missed it, Mark Zuckerberg is not allowed right. to use any of my personal information. And it's, yeah. it's legal because I posted it. Yeah. The, I said it. Yeah. That's like fantastic. Great. <laughs> Good work. So I bring this up because um, one, and it's fine. I was like, have you ever fallen for a scam? Like, or gotten close once. to falling for a scam? Once. Oh, okay. Once. Did you fall and it wasn't, it wasn't a huge, it wasn't a scam, but I got locked out of my Instagram account. So ah. I had a buddy whose Instagram account got hacked. Didn't realize this. He's a fellow filmmaker. And I messaged him about something and he messaged Fucking me back Eli saying, Roth. you know, God damn it. What's I know it's, Look, he's a fantastic filmmaker, horrible uh, social media friend. Just <laughs> he's always getting me hacked. Right. Um, no, his, uh, this guy's account got hacked, and he was uh, <clears throat> messaging him about something, and uh, he, I got a message back uh, speaking to what I just asked, and then he said, "Hey, I'm in this uh, film festival. Uh, you know, I got I submitted something, and you know, if you could just vote for me." You know, and again, not out of the nice. realm of like, you know, I just, I need, I need friends to go in and vote. The more that's, votes I get, the more, the like, further I can, good. yada, yada. And so he goes, uh, he's like, you know what? I'll even, he goes, I'll send you uh, a link. Uh, there's like, mm. there's, there's basically a specific link for whatever it is. <clears throat> I can't remember the the specifics around it. So I'm going to paraphrase the scam. There's this, you know, I can, it's like a recommendation link. So a specific link that I can give you. I'll even vote for, you don't even have to do it. Just send me a screenshot of the link so that I can type it in and I'll, I'll cast your vote. And I'm like, sure. Like it was very odd, but for some reason, like this guy's never, look, filmmakers always trying to get ahead somehow and they're asking for favors with friends. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I took a screenshot. What they did is they used my username and requested a password reset. And I got the message. I took a screenshot of that message, sent it to them. They used the URL, locked me out of my account and I couldn't get back in. And so they were going to use my account then to do that to all my friends. And again, that's their, so all of this guy's friends. And then if they got me, you, drew anyone on my friend list, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, just extrapolate that down the line. So luckily I was able to contact uh, Facebook uh, or uh, Instagram. I let them know you, you can do this thing where uh, you can face the, when you go through this process, Instagram has you scan your face. Uh, and then they look through your timeline to make sh to see if any of the faces in the timeline match yours. And if enough of them hit and yada, 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 they'll deactivate access for this person and give you access again. And it, and it worked and I got it back, but I was so fucking furious. I was so mad. I fell for it. Cause I'm really, really diligent about that's not, a clever one though. Right. Cause that's not doing the that but possibility. He, that's, you know, exactly. But they, it, this is the thing is they engineered it to be, I'm like, well, that sounds like a film, like something a filmmaker, an indie filmmaker would request. I'm like, I, I, if I was in, if I was up for something, I would be asking all my friends to log in and just cast a vote for me. Milos has done stuff where their bar has been up for like best new bar in Chicago. And he's like, can you go into, you know, Metro Chicago's web or whatever the website is and, and just, you know, vote for our, our place. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do that. You know? So it's, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. It's a very well engineered scam. And I fell for it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That sucks, man. Like I, yeah, I don't. I have never fallen for a scam. Um, I've come close a couple times. Like a, a a work friend and mentor got their Instagram hacked, and they were DMing me, and things got really weird. They're like, "Hey, how are you?" I was like, mm, "This is weird. You've never messaged me on Instagram before." <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, okay. And they're like, hey, you should check out this link and whatever. I go to the website. I was like, this seems very odd. And I realized that there was like an extra S in the, ah, in yeah, the thing. Yeah. And I was like, I messaged back. I'm like, hey, go fuck yourself. You know, more or less <laughs> is what I told them. And I reported them and I reached out to that person. I go, hey, just so you know, someone's packed your stuff. They're like, I'm aware, yeah. unfortunately. Sorry about that. I'm like, it's not your fucking yeah. fault, whatever. Um, I did get my account hacked in World of Warcraft once. I don't even oh, know how did. it happened, but... Uh, 
I I logged in and all of a sudden my character was just floating in space, slowly falling to their death and all my shit was gone. And I'm like, I felt, and this is so dumb, but I'm like, I felt so violated because I'm like, this was all my stuff, everything like that. And I remember I call, I like, I had contacted Blizzard tech support and I go, I I was like listening. I go, I think these are the things that I had in my inventory. And I had to like go through some legit ways to confirm that it was me. Yeah. And when they did, they reset it. They're like, hey, you should, this was early on. They're like, you should turn on multi-factor authentication. And I was like, you fucking damn right I will. Yeah. And uh, they restored everything. But I remember feeling like really stupidly, I felt stupidly violated because I was like, man, like someone just took all my shit. Like, right. It made me not right. want to play anymore. Cause I'm like, well, fuck this. Like <clears throat> uh, all my stuff's gone, you know, like, and, and to what end, you know, it's so dumb. And, uh, well, and that's why yeah. anytime they offer two factor authentication, I will take it. I'll turn it on and take it without, without hesitation. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are like, but it's just so inconvenient. And, Wayne Parham used to, Wayne. God bless him. He had the, Wayne had the best uh, return. Whenever people like, you know, would call into the customer service line and be like, oh, this is so inconvenient. This password thing, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it would, like, he'd go, hey, security is not supposed to be convenient. Yeah, it's true. Security is not supposed to be convenient. Security is set up specifically to be a deterrent. So yeah. you're going to have to jump through a few more hoops, but you can rest assured comfortably that you won't be hacked if you just fucking go through these goddamn steps. I like that. Yeah. I like that because people don't understand sometimes that, you know, yeah, you have to go through a little bit of extra stuff to make sure yeah. that your st- shit stays secure. So. That's the point. If it's annoying for you, it's going to be twice as annoying for the fucking person trying to hack you. So yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. It's the same thing like with passwords, right? Like I, uh, I own a, I, I've subscribed to a password manager. It's the best fucking $5 I've ever spent per month. I right. fucking love it because not only does it like, provide and auto populate ridiculous passwords that no one's ever going to crack it's saved yeah. so instead of me re- right. just putting in the same fucking password to every goddamn site because i don't want to try and remember what's what this thing is just going to save it for me and then auto populate i'm like this is the best fucking thing in the it's world beautiful thing it's beautiful so thing plus yeah. two-factor authentication god bless you you know i'm happy to absolutely. do it absolutely it's annoying sometimes absolutely. but i'm like hey this is worth it you know because right. my shit's going to be confirmed because i've gotten some of those messages like I told you this, I think I found it. I was like so weird when I would turn on Disney plus and I'd hit play and everything would just start in Spanish. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Why is it always weird. defaulting to Spanish? And this was going on for like two years. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? And then randomly one day I got a message that said, Hey, we know she tried to log in from Spain. I'm like, what the fuck? Really? So I like changed my password. I went in and I saw that there was like four Four different people logged in from Spain into Fuck my account. Off. And I went out, nuts, all of a sudden dude. I was like, wait a minute. Cause I, I don't, I'm not in Disney plus a lot. I went in, I started looking at all previously watched things. I'm like, I haven't watched that. No, no one's definitely, I realized these people <laughs> somehow got into my account and they've just been watching this for free yeah. for fucking ever. And I'm like, no wonder it <laughs> defaults to Spanish because people have always watching this in Spanish. And so I'm like paranoid now. So I, I changed my password. And then I keep going in and checking to see I'm like, are these assholes still watching my shit? <laughs> yeah. The, I had this, I had the similar thing. I, I, for, I forgot about this similar thing with Netflix. I logged in and there were now like Netflix doesn't have porn, like straight porn on there, but there yeah. are some like spicier yeah. titles that they have, you know, it was almost like, like 1917. The, exactly. Yeah. God. Hot year. Oh, hot year, baby. S- so spicy world horny. one one flick you know <laughs> that is a horny film yeah. um no but they've got some it's like they've got uh the equivalent of those uh <laughs> those air, airport romance novels <laughs> right like that's whatever those would be like that's yeah. what they have on Netflix. but i logged in one time and like all of the recommendations or the recently watched were were these titles mm-hmm. and i'm like hold on a sec so i i, asked, I go hey beth it's gonna sound real weird have you been watching like, like sultry shit on Netflix? And I don't care if you like that doesn't bother me. Like that's cool, but I just need to know if this is us or if something fucking weird's happening. And she goes, "Absolutely not." And I go, "Cool." Then we're changing, changing this the password. password. I don't. I don't know what the fuck happened. Now the only other thing, and I would laugh my ass off, is at the time I was sharing it with my mom and stepdad. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I have a. I have a strong suspicion it was not them. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the anal airport. You know, that's my favorite one. You know, <laughs> this is gross. 
<laughs> You're like, Mom? Mom? Good TSA means something real different here. <laughs> right, baby. We're getting in deep to find out what you're hiding, <laughs> ma'am. You know? TSA, in. more like TNA, am I right? That's oh. right. Oh, baby. We, Boom. We don't put on these gloves for no reason, ma'am. We got to check inside <laughs> every Hold hole. on. Let me slip this glove on and some lubricant. That's right. Netflix, baby. you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix and chill. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I fucking do, brother. Anyway, so I look. Th- it happens. Scams happen. We'd love to know. Have you ever been scammed? Yeah. And what scam would you probably fall for? Because nowadays I'd probably fall for a food based scam, you know? Oh, yeah. Something to be like, hey, man, you know, get free, get a free thing, get a free pizza, whatever. I'd probably be like, that you give me like a, f- a good deal. You give me a free ice cream cone, I will sign up for whatever you want. Because that's how you get for. me. It's something that's like low, like, right. It's got to be enough to be like, oh, that sounds like a good deal, but it's not like extravagant, mm-hmm. like, you know, free pizzas for life you know like that kind of bullshit you know? again if it's too good to be true it usually it's is too good to be true it's and too so, good to be true yeah um it's got to be reasonable enough that i but yeah something food-based i'd probably fall for um because that's the thing it's, it's got to align with my interests you know yeah because it's too many of this stuff i understand <clears throat> it's like a general swath of things where you know like you've gotten the same one over and over which is a picture of some <laughs> beautiful lady getting ready in some place they're like Hello, where are you? And you're like, I told you where I am. I'm 45 minutes away on the freeway. They're like, you're supposed to be here for the the makeup gala. Why aren't you here? They're like, well, and then eventually they go, oh my gosh, you're not who I thought you were. (laughs) What a happy mistake. What are you doing? You know, it's like this horrible thing where I'm like, obviously this is you you just it's some entry yeah. thing into starting up a con- what what great what a wonderful coincidence that we met while i was sending you pictures of this beautiful woman to get your attention you know like, right all that oh yeah and then bullshit. yeah because that, that's it they're trying to entice you to go like oh maybe if i talk to her i'll maybe there's a connection to be had listen 20 years ago jesus how old am i yeah 20 years ago you would have <laughs> done something with tits probably would have fallen for it hey what's going on yeah. nowadays i'm like you you're no don't I'm not only are you barking enough, up the, i'm self-aware enough to know bullshit. bullshit not only are you barking up the wrong tree in that regard mm-hmm. but also i live for that so you have yes. picked the wrong person <laughs> just, you are about to get a world of hurt if you're a scammer out there just know justin if you're texting justin he's gonna waste your time he's, oh. gonna, he's gonna take you on a roller coaster man michael we are gonna have a days long conversation my friend <laughs> yeah because yeah. i think that has to be the best way to combat them is to waste their time because it's frustrating because they are spending their time and energy and they're not getting anything for it exactly there's no possible chance they're going to get anything out of this and then my the way i look at it is the any any one more minute they spend with me is one more minute they're not spending on someone who might fall for it so that's that's my little way of being like i'm trying to do a little bit of good and i'm just going to waste as many minutes of their time as i possibly can so they're not fucking with someone else there's streamers that do this on twitch i think there's a guy named kitboga is his name okay. and he does this he just streams it constantly and he'll keep them on the phone for 5 hours he does a whole oh, stream I've, yeah i've seen someone who do, is, it, is does he throw his voice uh, like a voice mod makes himself sound like a like grandma or something glasses on and stuff like that oh just, some of these guys are so good makes at that fake man websites and he gets oh, fake yes. fake cards, like gift cards, and he puts them in. He's like pretends, and the guys are losing their minds. They're like, "No, no, don't enter it. Give me." They're like, "I'm entering it now." And he's like an old lady. They're like, "No, you bitch, you bitch, you stupid bitch. Why don't you listen? Why don't you listen?" He's like, "I'm putting. It. Why are you yelling at me? I'm doing what you said. I'm putting it in." He's like, "Stop putting it in." <laughs> it just ruins their day, and he's just like, "Yeah, go fuck yourself." <laughs> That's so much. He does that because that his grandma so got taken advantage of. So he makes right, it right, his right, mission yeah. in life to be like, cool, well, I'm going to ruin your right. life because what yeah, you do absolutely. Is, is awful to people, you know? Yep. Because they, uh, they play that shit all the time, you know? <clears throat> and they, they take advantage of people, especially like they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, hey, this is uh, Microsoft. I'm calling because uh, we've got some uh, virus activity and uh, we're going to walk you through how to fix it, you know? And they right. just totally lie to you. And of course, all those people are like, I don't understand how this works. And they fall yeah. for it. I don't even like giving access to my computer when when I call when I call a tech support mm-hmm. like with something and they're like okay we're gonna we're, like because when I in, when I was in the customer service department we'd send uh, WebEx links so we could 
get on the computer and control it and this and that. I look, I'm I'm I consider myself pretty tech savvy. I still don't feel comfortable doing that when I call tech support. Like yeah. I'm like, I'll do it, but it's under a monitor. I'm watching every fucking thing you're doing because I don't like this. I don't like yeah. this one little bit. Yeah. The the other uh, scam that I just uh, started to hear about, and this may be older, I don't know. Apparently they're sending, people will send out uh, Amazon, pa- you'll send, it, send you a gift for anonymous gift. And it, it's like scan this QR code to find out who sent, the, sent you the gift or to find out how to blah, 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 blah. And you scan the QR code and it takes you, it's it's something that, you know, immediately they've got all your your information. I don't know how it works. I just said I'm tech savvy. Don't understand how that works. Um, but that's something that I'm just like, fuck, that's right. Like when we were just getting started in, in a assignment desk, when we were starting to kind of think about like, you know, comedy and the mind gap and this and that. Remember, we were tossing around the idea of like, we should just make QR codes that take you to the mind gap thing. And just leave them on the train. So people are like, what's this? And they scan it and then they can listen to Mind Gap. And like you look at that and then look at now. And I'm like, there's no fucking way I'd s- scan an unsolicited QR code. No, there's too much. Absolutely stuff not. That exists out there. That's just there to just to screw you over in that regard. Yeah. And it's it's unfortunate because uh, you just can't trust anything. And that's the thing, too. Again, too good to be true. Like, hey, free. You remember how I freaked out when Haig sent me a dollar? <laughs> You remember that? Oh my god! I made a big yes. deal about it. You're like, dude, it's a dollar. Like, why I've, would you? I go, I go. I don't know who the fuck this is. Who's sending me a dollar? What's the? We're, we're going to repost this? that this you week. Know? I have to repost that video again. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I lost we my were fucking in the, mind uh, over that because basement like, of Elephant is, and Castle. Yeah, and you're like, what is this? Yeah, what is this? I'm like, it's a dollar. Just accept it. And you're like, no. I was like, I refuse. I don't know who this is. Who's sending me a dollar? This sounds like bullshit. You know, right? Like that, even then, I was suspicious. I was like, no, fuck that. Who, what shit. random yeah. person is just sending me a dollar? This is bullshit. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's bullshit. Yeah. Do you have? Do you have a? Uh, do you have any like? Co- like when I was younger, we we had a code word. Like my mom and I, she's like, if if you know if someone comes to pick you up, if like I'm incapacitated and I have to send a friend or someone you might not know, work colleague, I'll give them this word. You know, which again, flaw in the system there. If you're incapacitated, if you're knocked the fuck out, this person's not going to know the word, so I'm not coming with them. But it was a good, unprincipled, it was a good idea. We're going to have this code word that if, unless they say it, you don't go with them. If they say it, you're, they're in, you know, sparrow flies at midnight kind of thing. So did you, do you have something similar to that with Natalie? Uh, we have a have you, very have strong that? password that we yeah? use, that we can that use she, for each other. That she's encrypted with? Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> only we know it. It is a string of random things that we say oftentimes when we do yeah. a jinx with each other. And oh, uh, yeah, yeah. it is elaborate. And I'll be like, and I told that, I go, hey, if for some reason anyone asks for you to whatever, you tell them what's the password. And this is what the password will be. If they can't recite that, don't fucking go with them. Run the opposite direction. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But I feel like we need to start doing that now with like, I'm, I'm this close to going back to my mom and saying, hey, look, we need to reestablish this password because if someone calls and yeah. says with my voice and says, hey, I'm in jail and I need bail or I, you know, fuck, I'm stranded on the side of the road. My car broke down. Beth is so, so, you know, elsewhere. They got all this information. Don't send money unless you have this word, this quote, you know? Yeah. So I feel, I feel like I need to reestablish that with all of my family. There's this guy, he goes by uh, his, his, he goes by Thor and his, his his streamer thing is pirate software. And he talks about how he tells his bank, he goes, never verify (laughs) anything with my voice. He goes, I'm a streamer. I stream nine hours a day. He goes, sure. there's absolutely people will have access to my voice and everything's like that. He goes, do never, never, ever, ever allow anyone to verify anything with my voice. He's like, we've set up an arrangement so that there's other ways for them to verify that it's me. He goes, cause hmm. we're not fucking dealing with that shit. So yeah, that's, that I say, that's impressive. Yeah. Wise choice. That guy does not fuck around. So. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, look, we're putting ourselves in the same position with the podcast. Like it's true. It's true. Yeah. Could people be like, They'll be like, I'm Doug Cochran. I hate stuff, you know? <laughs> well, that sounds like him. We must- that sounds like <laughs> that's him. A, I'm that practical, tracks. Doug. This would make sense if you did this. You're like, yeah, that sounds like him, you know? Yeah, that's practical Doug, all right. To a T. To a fucking T. Justin? Yeah? Are you ready? Do you have your big boy pants on? Because it's time to play Guess the Movie Based on the Audio. I got my big boy pants on. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. I've got three for you. Ah, here we go. Two of them are lines. One of them is a sound effect. Okay. Slash a line. So. Okay. Hope you're ready. 
If you're new here, the way this works is I'm going to play a sound effect or a line from a movie, and Justin has to use ex his extensive knowledge of movies to pinpoint what it is. So, first one's up. Justin, you ready? Yes. <laughs> I don't think you are. I don't think you're focused. I will find him! <laughs> Very quick. Was not ex I, was ex I was waiting for it to be longer. I said, I will fight him. I will find him. I will find him. Find him. Okay. All right. Now that I have that, give it to me one more time. Hold on. I got to turn. I have you low so it doesn't bleed into the microphone, but I, uh -huh. I need to turn it up for this. Turn Go it ahead. up, baby. I will find him. Shit. This line has I always stood out him. to me in this film. Because previous to this, he says this very casually, like sinister. But then it's just out of nowhere. He just he just yells, "I will find him!" And it's like very intense. I'm, I was always like, like, "God what? damn!" <laughs> I guess you. I, I believe you. Him. Like, <laughs> we'll find. I will find him. Um, I, I I don't know why Leon the professional jumped into my mind. Okay, I could see that. Who who, who, who what what from Gary Leon? Oldman? You think it's you think it's Gary Oldman? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it sounds like him, but like he was, he was unhinged in that film. So that's, that's a really, that's, it's not it, but I see exactly why. That's why I was like, Ooh, cause you think it's Gary Oldman in that, with yeah. that sort of like unhinged way. <clears throat> um, is it Gary Oldman? It's not Gary Oldman. Okay. All right. So I can eliminate Gary Oldman yes. films. All right. Um, I will find him. I'm gonna, the voice I'm gonna sounds again. familiar. I feel like if you can make out the actor, it'll help you a lot. I will find him. At the time this was recorded, <laughs> almost undoubtedly 80 yard, um, was the actor, was it an older actor at the time or a younger actor? Uh, or, or like middle, like our age? I guess I hate middle age, older aged. than us, but like, you know, he's definitely not old. I wouldn't think people would see, see him and go, oh, that's an old guy. Right, right, right. I will Man, I can't. I feel like I know the voice. I just, I'm not able to pinpoint it. You give it to me. You definitely like would know the voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you a hint. This actor, super fucking intense. Like he has an intensity about him that, like, we've Nick talked Cage? about him. No, not Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cage is intense in his own way. This guy in is a way that's way. like, I think we used to talk about it in Simon Desk. Like, man, this guy's fucking like. Oh! Oof. Wait, is this Zod? It is Zod. Is this Michael Shannon? It's Michael Shannon. Nice. Boom, Man of Steel. Woo. Nice job. Okay, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, again, now I can hear it. My yes, now I got yeah. it. All right, let's listen to it again now that you know who that is. Yeah. I will find him. So he's saying Man. this is the part where he's he's been on trial. He and his other followers are about to be shot into the Phantom Zone. To the Phantom Zone, yeah. And like he's, he's turning to, uh, you know, uh, Whatever, Jor El's. They're wife. in case. He's, they're getting encased, right? They are, and he's like, he's like, yeah. I will find him, Laura. I will find him. And there's just this pause. It cuts to her, and then it cuts back to him, and he's like, I will find him. And then they send him to the Phantom Zone and like cocks. They're like always cocking oh. sort of things that get sent right. out of the Phantom Zone. It's really weird. Hmm. What? Uh, hmm. Great job, man. You got Ooh, no. That was great hints too. It was really that was working to get. That's teamwork, baby. That's, that's what right, that man. Because I was like, I, you know, Michael Shannon. That dude's intense as fuck. Yeah, like, so good. All right, well done. All right, here you great, go. Great, great pull on that one. That was a good Thank pull. Thank you. That's one of my favorite lines. I will, whenever it's like, I will find him, I always just scream, I will find him. I will find him. One. Really what this game is, is random lines that I always get stuck out to me in movies. That's really what this game that is. That I like, so, yeah. That I like, and I want to see if you know him too. All right, here we go. All right. Number two. I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. How many years you spend pissing on the toilet seat before someone told you to put it up? One of my favorite lines from a film. I couldn't. I couldn't make out the first part. Give, give All right, it, here we go. Give it again. I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. How many years you spend pissing on the toilet seat before someone told you to put it up? I didn't know the sponge was supposed to be wet. How many years yeah. did you spend pissing on the toilet seat before someone had? To, that's the Green Mile. It is a Green Mile. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't that's get it a, from the the actors, but I got it from the context. Yeah, I remember I that scene specifically. I, it was a pain in the ass trying to find the audio for the scene, so I had a real yeah, yeah. low quality one for this. 
but okay. I got it. It's. I was, was gonna it, say it sounded like someone recorded, like recorded yes. it with the phone off. It's of the exactly thing, not what a, it was. It was recorded. I, I was like, yeah. Yeah. you could hear that like chinniness. Shit, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But good. It, yeah. That if you haven't seen that movie, it's a great scene because the oh, character Percy that, is oh, easily man, the most hated screen. character, one of the most hated characters in that all scene. cinema, and he just the part of executing prisoners is you're supposed to get a wet sponge put it on their head because this is they're getting electrocuted in like the 19 fucking 30s and that mm-hmm. water creates conductivity which helps speed along the process of them dying he tortures this guy by not making the sponge wet so the guy has to just get fucking literally fried it's yeah. awful and they go down he, yeah, he gets and- less electrocuted and more fried Exactly. And it's a horrible experience for everybody. And so they come down yep. there and the warden comes down there. He's like, what in the blue fuck is going on? And, and like Percy gets punched in the face and he turns to him. He's like, well, Percy, you got something to say. And he's like, he has like a little thing on his mouth. He's like, I didn't know the sponge is supposed to be wet, which is full of shit. He did know that. Yeah. And then I just love that. He's like, well, how many times you pissed on the toilet seat before someone told you to put it up? You know? So that's such a great, that is such a wonderful great writing. That yeah. is one reference writing. for real people in real time all the time where I like something happens. I just turn to Jill. And I'm like, I didn't know the sponge is supposed to be wet to make fun of him. Like that's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I love, can I say too, with this guy, I don't know how you're pulling all, like, it's amazing to me that you're finding all of these, this, the, it, you setting this up is more impressive than the game it's like this is amazing you're you're doing an incredible job douglas thank you my my biggest fear is like i don't know if he's seen this movie and if he has i don't know if he's gonna pinpoint this line because i don't want to be too off kilter and so specific but i mean no these lines are they they're meaningful to me for some reason so anyway well and here's the thing you and i share pretty much share half a brain so i feel i feel like if it's meaningful to you i've probably got some skin in the game all right at least eight out of ten times this last one's either going to be really easy or really hard love so it there's no in between so Cut i it. yeah again like, all right that's all i'm gonna say so here we go it's kind okay. of a sound effect kind of but it's also kind of a line so here we go okay <laughs> that's 300 that is yes i knew it <laughs> absolutely I was like, he's gonna get it right away or yes like, that could be any fucking thing any you know <laughs> it's just a <laughs> just a bunch of guys saying "ahu," like what the hell? Uh, Auga, <laughs> love train, Auga. I bunch of bunch of horny guys in the '30s going Auga. <laughs> yes, this is a hundred percent. Yes, whenever the Spartans like Chan or whatever, but specifically, it's from the scene where you know. This is. Well, can I guess? Yeah, go for it. Is this is this the one where they're moving forward to try to drive the people off the cliff? Great, great question. This is specifically when they meet up with uh, can't remember what other. Uh, uh, group of warriors, but they come from another town and they're like, you only brought 300? He goes, oh, we brought more than you. And he goes, oh, really? He goes, what, uh, you, what's your profession? He's like, I'm a potter. He's like, what's your prof- profession? I'm a blacksmith. And you, he goes, I'm a sculptor. And he goes, Spartans, what are you, what's your job? And they go, oh, oh, oh. He goes, looks like I brought more warriors than you did. You know, like just <laughs> pissing on this so guy's good. feet, you know? Oh, it's such a good film. Yeah, but that, that's done a lot of times throughout the film, you know, where basically, yeah, like, yeah. you know, they, that's, that, that's their rallying cry, more or less. Yeah. So, yeah, very good. Well done, man. I'm so happy. That was great round. This was a really good round. Very Thank fun. Thank you very much. I I very much have fun. It's stressful, but at the same time, I'm like, all right, let's 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 have some fun and let's do some stuff. So, yeah, uh, hope you all enjoyed that. And hopefully, you know, let us know which ones you got, which ones you didn't. <laughs> was it challenging? Was it easy? You let us know. So... All right, uh, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? I am going to recommend uh, Remembering Gene Wilder. And I do not remember. I don't remember what surface this is on. Um, remembering Amazon Prime. Gene Wilder. It is? Okay, great. Um, oh, no, I have Netflix. no idea. I just guessed. <laughs> it's on Netflix. Uh, remembering Gene Wilder. It's a... It's a... Uh, it's beautiful. It's it's just a celebration of his life, his career. Uh, it kind of it just it documents just kind of what a gentle, wonderful soul he was, and uh, it was really cool. Um, I will say it does veer a little bit into almost like um, like painting him as like a saint. Like it's a little bit of that, like almost too saccharine, but at the same time, I feel like he was a really sweet guy. So this is. Uh, 
Yeah, it's really cool. So like it's got, like it says right here, interviews and never before seen footage provide insight into the life, career, and legacy of actor and comedian Gene Wilder. So if you're a fan of Gene Wilder, if you've ever seen any of his films, uh, I would just say, you know, it, even if you don't know who he is and you want to get an idea of who he was, beautiful documentary. So please, uh, please check it out. I think it's definitely worth the time. It's an hour and 32 minutes. It's right in the sweet spot. It's not too long. It's digestible. And you nice. know what? If you're having a bad day, this will make you feel better. There you go. There you go. Doug, what do you got? I started listening to an audio book. Ooh. At the strong, do tell. Recommend, at the strong rec- recommendation of my friend Casey, who okay. told me about this months ago. And every time I see him, he's like, you listen to this yet? And the last time I saw him over the weekend, he's like, you should check it out. I'm like, I'm going to do it, man. He goes, I'm not going to hold my breath. And I was like, fuck you, Casey. So I went <laughs> and I got it. And it's called Dungeon Crawler Carl. And it's by Matt uh, Dineman. And it's also like this book. I think the rights to this got purchased by Seth MacFarlane. So I think it's about okay. to get like, you know, it's about to pop into okay. uh, popular culture. Uh, I will read you. Uh, a little bit of just like what the synopsis is. Join Coast Guard, Coast Guard vet Carl and his ex-girlfriend's cat, Princess Donut, as they try to survive the end of the world or just get to the next level in a video game-like trap-filled fantasy dungeon. A dungeon that's actually the set of a reality television show with countless viewers across the galaxy. Exploding goblins, magical potions, deadly drug-dealing llamas. This ain't your ordinary any game show. Welcome, Crawler. Welcome to the dungeon. Survival is optional. Keeping the viewers entertained is not. It is interesting. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, I'm like on chapter fifteen, and uh, if you're a fan of role playing games, even if you're not, but it it reads like this guy gets the world basically is getting fucked up. He's one of the few like millions of people who get into this dungeon, and like he has stats. Uh, it starts with his base stats on who he is and he gets like other things. Like if he punches something, he gets a stat in that. And like, he just starts trying to survive in this dungeon. And it's like, it plays like a role playing game and he's like trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And I absolutely love it. It's so much fun. And this is the first book of like, I think there's currently six out. The seventh one's coming out in December. I think the author's trying to do about 10 total. Jeez, and so so you've got you you've got plenty to to keep you busy. The with. guy that that narrates this is fucking phenomenal. He does okay. all the voices, and they are fantastic. <clears throat> he is I incredible. love it. So uh, I got this on Audible, and it's fucking fantastic. I can't wait to get through the first book, and I'll give you all an update as I go. But it is excellent. It is so much. That's fun. cool. It's so much fun. It's witty. It's silly, and it's just great. Um, so, and I'm also excited. I'm like, this is like. I literally, I was like, how's no one like done anything with this? I'm like, oh, they're going to because they should. I think it's going to be animated if it, probably. So I love it, which would be amazing. It's very, very fun. So check that out. Uh, I think I think, you know, it's worth it's absolutely worth a listen or a read. I think you'll enjoy it. So do very that. Cool. Do that, baby. Uh, also, uh, head over to YouTube.com slash Mind Gap podcast to watch us. Watch these episodes. See what we're up to. See what we look like. See what this if the sounds match the look, you know, and uh, while you're there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button uh, and also check the link in the description for links to our discord, for links to our patron, for links to our merch at Redbubble and uh, follow us on our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast and check out Justin as well. On Instagram, uh, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, if you prefer to listen to your podcasts, audio version, you can find us anywhere you can find your uh, your other favorite podcasts. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, review, uh, share us around. The big one is sharing. Let people know we exist. It's the only way that we're going to grow and we really appreciate it. And then TweeStaith.com, TweeStaith on all social media and LoveAndImprovFilm.com and LoveAndImprovFilm on Instagram. Booyah! And with that being said, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.